So as I said before, I am the U.S. guerrilla soldier, the PSYOPs war, and a spiritual war. The theater arts, um, my master's is in theater arts, and the theater arts is a systematic analysis of human behavior across time periods and countries. We look at the world starting all the way back in 6th uh, uh, excuse me, sixth century um, through the, the eyes of dictators and power plays, intimidation, vanity, um, all these things that uh, end up making up the composite of human interaction of history and the world. But whenever you kick the theater artists out of our stages, whenever you price us out of our field, whenever you force us to not be distracted by our plays anymore, we start looking at the world as Shakespeare did, as all the world is a stage. And we start looking at the characters and the dictators and the power plays and the intimidation moves and the, you know, all these motivations that have inspired human um, uh, interaction and human call to actions that hasn't really changed from biblical times to now. We are still inspired by the same things. We are motivated by greed and pride and envy and wrath and um, cheating the system, um, trying to gain as much power as possible. These things haven't really changed from today as they were back in 6th century. Um, and even 5th century when Art of War was written. So what I'm going to do is show you what today's climate looks like through the eyes of an artist. And an artist takes down takes um, human behavior, breaks it down into its smallest action points, and then compares it. So let's look at this dictatorship game. And the thing that we, we want to know or want to learn, and hopefully we learn by the end of this, is that dictators never share power or wealth. They always betray. They always betray alliances. So for this experiment, we're going to look at the investment markets because that's where World War III started. It is a usurpation of nations through investments. And we have a, a, a collaboration of China and Russia she and Putin that started in 2000, uh, 2013 with the goal of regaining their old world power. So we look at that relationship and we have China as the cybersecurity threat and Russia as the trolls, the disinformation um, factories that are causing the chaos, the division in nations, the distraction, so they can't see the investment deals that are happening that are stealing the wealth that we talked about in the last podcast right out of the um, right out of the country's hands. But let's look at that whole spectrum of OPEC. Let's look at BRI. Let's look at everything going on, realizing that dictators never share power and they always betray alliances. This has been the same thing that has been happening since 6th century. And even before that, if we could look at the biblical times and see that same idea of People who are obsessed with controlling the entire world's power do not have any intention of sharing. So if we look at the relationship of OPEC oil, which is not your father's OPEC oil anymore, it's controlled by Saudi and Russia, and they're trying to, dis to control the distribution outlets of oil. But Saudi Arabia is about to be pushed out. And that's why this whole nationalist idea has been going on in all the different countries, is to push out the Muslims. So that, just like we saw in 1934, and I talked about this in another podcast, where we have this nationalist propaganda campaign going on, being pushed by these people calling themselves conservatives and the evangel evangelicals and the Catholics, um, and are trying to put a God angle onto it, but it's really just a targeting of a religious group in order to steal their wealth and power. And so this is how Russia intends to portray Saudi Arabia in order to gain control of the entire oil industry of the Middle East and has been using the U.S. soldiers through our politicians who believe that China and Russia are going to share oil wealth and power with them to do this through sanctions and the abuse of our U.S. military soldiers. Um, we have, so we have this military alliance that happened with that charter, um, OPEC Charter of Cooperation that was signed at G20 Summit with 14 cartels and the president's daughter in that same room acting as POTUS advisor. And we know that she's the VP Executive Acquisition and Development of Trump Organization. 
So while we have a conflict of interest involved in a foreign policy um, cooperation of almost a military um, uh, aspect to it, where the, the, the country's militaries are, and, and laws and funding is going to protect these oil deals. So we know that uh, she and Putin have been in this bromance that keeps growing bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. Why? Because China needs Russia's military. And in, in 2018 with the war games, we saw the collaboration of China and Russia in those war games and Rand warning U.S. Congress that that kind of relationship is going to be detrimental to the military. We saw how Congress instead sent in the U.S. military anyways, and we ended up with brain dead soldiers. So China needs Russia. Russia has the military equipment. It's been teaching China everything that it knows, which when you think about it, if there is a double cross here, China will have all of Russia's secrets. All of your military secrets will be known by China, the Chinese government, not China, not the Chinese people themselves, the Chinese government who are oppressing the China, Chinese people. So Russia has given away all their, all their military secrets, just as the U.S. gave away all our tech secrets. Whenever we thought um, China would never be able to come up with their own ability to manufacture and, uh, I'm sorry, to market and sell their own products. So Russia did exactly what the U.S. did and gave away all your military secrets to the Chinese government, which controls all the corporations in China. Um, so that's going on. And then whenever China decides that it's going to, to betray Russia, because it is, it has several different ways of doing it. It has the China for Foreign Investment Law that has a loophole, a loophole called the Nation Forbidden List loophole, where they can shut out any nation's investor that they want out of their markets once they control it with that Petro Yuan gold uh, as a global standard, which gives the Chinese yuan full power. And they can shut out all the nation's investors of their markets who do not comply with Xi's rules. We have the China Social Credit Moral Law System. And if you've read that, um, if you've actually read the document that has the laws listed, you'll see how it creates a new government structure that almost just wipes out all the other nation's government's laws, where everyone has to be compliant to this new law system. And, and it includes insurance, it includes health insurance, it includes everything, where you have to be obedient to the Communist Party of China, or they can financially affect everything from your communication grids to your financial, to everything. How can they do that? Because right now they're working to control the entire technocracy using Chairman Xi's uh, cyber, um, the cyber tech giants, Alibaba, Tencent, Badu, who are the main shareholders of Foxconn, which is the factory of um, Hawaii technology, which is also the factory of Apple, which is trying to get kicked out of China right now and trying to move, I believe, to the United States because they're known for those guarded uh, worker labor camps of their undocumented immigrants. And we have that already in the United States posing right now as deportation centers. So we have this situation where at the end of all of this, all this betrayal, so Russia betrays uh, Saudi, um, China portrays Russia, China ends up having full control of everything. The financial structure, this communication structure, communication structure, the military communication structures of all the grids, and the whole entire world ends up being under communist China. And what do those rules in China look like? That's a good question. I will read you the 48 ways to end up in a concentration labor camp. Um, red flags for detainment in um, Zhejiang. Owning a tent, telling others not to swear, speaking with someone who has traveled abroad, owning welding equipment, telling others not to sin, having traveled abroad yourself, owning extra food, eating breakfast before the sun comes up, merely knowing someone who has traveled abroad, owning a compass, arguing with an official, publicly stating that China is inferior to some other country, owning multiple knives, sending a petition that complains about local um, officials, having too many children, abstaining from alcohol, abstaining, not allowing officials to sleep in your bed, eat your food, and live in your house, having a VPN, 
abstaining from cigarettes, not having your government ID on your person, having WhatsApp, wailing publicly grieving or otherwise acting sad when your parents die, not letting officials take your DNA, watching a video film abroad, wearing a scarf in the presence of the Chinese flag, wearing a hajib if you are under 45, going to a mosque, praying, fasting, listening to a religious lecture, not letting officials scan your irises, not letting officials download everything you have on your phone, not making voice, voice recordings to give to officials, speaking your native language in school, speaking your native language in government work groups, speaking with someone abroad via Skype, WeChat, etc., wearing a shirt with Arabic lettered writing on it, having a full beard, wearing any clothes with religious iconic, uh, iconography, not attending mandatory propaganda classes, not attending mandatory flag raising ceremonies, not attending public struggle sessions, refusing to denounce your family members or yourself in these public struggle sessions, trying to kill yourself when detained by the police, trying to kill yourself when in education camps, performing a traditional funeral, inviting multiple families to your house without registering with the police department and being related to anyone who has done any of the above. These are the things that will get the Chinese people put into an education reform camp. And this is what we're looking at if we let Chairman Xi have global control of the entire world, global communism. Now you have to decide, is this something that you want? Now, if this isn't bad enough, we also have the AI machines that have been, had their um, do no human harm removed in order to weaponize them for war. So we have these machines that are capable of learning in a faster rate than any human possible that is being taught right now because of the cyber trolls, the science, um, all the cyber trolls and all the trolling on cyber networks to be selfish and win at all costs. And we are seeing a small preview of that with the driverless cars that are choosing to protect the car and not the pedestrian or the driver, the human of the car, because we removed the do no human harm rule of these AI machines that are self-learning and being taught to be selfish and win at all costs. And if that wasn't bad enough, so we've got global communism, we've got AI machines that we could create a whole Terminator situation. And then we have da, 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 a psychopathic narcissist POTUS, president of the United States, who is a high functioning mental disorder that is known for turning on the alliances the second you disagree just once. Anybody, doesn't matter whether it's a family member or um, a friend or alliance or, or whatever, or you know somebody that he's hired and we see that with the trend of all this firing. That mental disorder is extremely dangerous when you give it a lot of power. There's a book called Evil Genes, where, uh, Why Rome Fell, Hitler Ruled, Enron Failed, My Sister Ran Away with My Husband's boy or my, my Mother's Boyfriend, um, which examines the entire neurological structure of these kind of high-functioning mental disorders. In the case of um, Hitler being a border path narcissist and Chairman Mao being a border path narcissist. So those were bad enough. If we're looking at a psychopath narcissist who hides behind these false personality masks and bullying in order to hide his fragile ego that is extremely fragile and extremely low self-esteem. And whenever those masks are gone, we see these small glimpses of a very cold, cruel personality that lacks any kind of empathy. And we're starting to see a little bit of preview of that too. So we have these three situations, <laughs> which ends up being not good for anybody. Um, and if we have dictators who are turning on each other and they're stockpiling these nuclear weapons, now we have a situation where they're going to go after each other with their missiles. And we have a shaky environment that can't handle that kind of atmosphere. And we can end up destroying the entire earth for human in, in, um, humankind <laughs> because as the earth adapts to all these changes, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the favor of the humans living on that earth. So we can end up destroying our entire earth, not the earth itself, because it's going to adapt. That's what science does. It adapts to whatever the changes are. Fracking, 
The hydraulic um, pressure system is lubricating the long dormant um, tectonic plates underneath and they're starting to shift and that's causing these seismic earthquakes in o Oklahoma that are now registering on the same Richter scale as California. The earth will adapt, but the adaptations of the earth as, a, as the as the um, natural recurrences or occurrences happen, don't necessarily have to be in favor of the people that are living on the earth. So we can end up destroying our entire earth. Now we have some people saying, well, that's just the Armageddon. But we look at how God has been turned into a vessel of hate and violence and destruction. And if you look at the groups all having the same origin of, of, of beginnings of having Abraham um, being the uh, Muslims, Jews, and Christians, all having that same origin of Abraham to their prophecy of inheritance of the earth, our inheritance of, of heaven. And we have the two brothers who have been feuding with each other, um, the brothers of Abraham, I'm sorry, not the brothers, but the sons of Abraham who have been feuding with each other, each claiming they are the chosen one, the, um, the Jews and the Muslims. And then we also have the Christians who are sort of like, Here's Jesus, and he's like the rebel Jew. He's like, everybody is, 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 is allowed in. And so we have all three of these big uh, religious groups who have been going to war with each other from the time of civilization, trying to prove that they are the chosen one. But we can look at the book of Job, where um, it's a case brief. Uh, Job was a magistrate, and his friends were magistrates, and they're trying to come up with these ideas based off of um, traditions and laws on why these things happen to Job. And we see God enter on this des a machina, the um, God in the machine. And here he comes and he's the ultimate judge who gives this verdict, this dissension that says, I take care of the earth and humans are not necessary for its continuation. So we have to take all of these kind of things into heart. So if, you know, if you think an Armageddon is going to happen and that humans are going to be saved if we destroy our earth to make it happen, we may find that we end up being that failed experiment and everybody just gets thrown into the fire. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth the greed and the violence and the just the, the, the demagoguery, the power to have power and this need to control the entire world. It's like pinky in the brain trying to rule the entire world and they're, they're trying, you know, and every time they, they ended up hurting something. <laughs> this is where we're at now. And when I talk to the different people all over the world, we all want, of my generation and younger, we all want live and let live. And yet we have a lot of these older people who are still in power, who are close to not being on the earth much longer because of their age. There's a, there's a certain time limit of your age. Um, when you know you only have an expected time period and you know they're trying to destroy the earth for kids who are just now getting into that 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 life cycle and so i'm here as an advocate for those kids who are having their entire earth destroyed by people who have already lived their lives to the fullest and because they're so greedy and so arrogant and so vain in glory and just want everything, even though they can't take it with them. And these poor kids are having to live in the future that we are creating today. So you tell me, which do you want? Do you want global communism? Do you want Terminator, where the, uh, the machines take over the entire world? Do we want dictators to lash out with um, nukes and missiles and end up wrecking the entire economic structure of the world? And so the world is going to then do its thing and end up by, you know, destroying human race entirely? Or are we going to start cooperating? Are we going to get rid of this whole dictatorship idea and start having live and let live? Those are your options. You decide. <laughs>